Hey guys, this is Philatelli here with another Euro Truck Simulator 2 video. This is episode 14, I believe. Hope you're enjoying the series. I, I know I'm enjoying playing it. Hopefully as well you'll have noticed that the audio is much better on this video. I've got been out and bought myself a brand new headset. It's a um, Turtle Beach Air Force X12. It's USB powered. It's got noise cancellation stuff so hopefully this should be much better. So let's uh, go over where I'm up to. I've got 102,663 pounds in the bank. My drivers are doing good. Steve just done a massive job for me. Check that out. Three and a half grand. Three and a half grand profit. Thanks Steve. And Reese is doing really well as well. They both on jobs at the minute, are they? Yep. It's been a while since they've not been able to find a job, so that's good. Their uh, ratings are going up as well, so that's great. Uh, today we're going to... I've been thinking about... I mentioned in a few, a few videos ago that I was going to buy a new base in Frankfurt. But I think what I'm going to do is actually upgrade my base in Manchester first to five drivers. The reason being, uh, to buy a new base is 144k. Plus you need a truck which is another 100,000 so it's 244k and I've got 102 in the bank I can borrow 48 that's weird that said I could borrow 80 a while ago I'm sure okay well we'll sack Batman I forget I said anything um, anyway, I figured it was less money to upgrade my base in Manchester first and get five drivers going there. So, not going to do that just yet. No, we need a bit more money, so let's just do a quick job. It's a nice short one. Taking yogurt from Kiel, where I am in this place here in northern Germany, to Rostock, just down the road. Metaphorically speaking, obviously. Since it's not really a road. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, that was close. So yeah, I hope you guys have been enjoying watching this video. I've been getting some good views on it, some good comments. Uh, shout out to Sudeen. I think that's how you pronounce his name who's been giving me lots of great tips on gameplay and control system as well, it's his idea or his suggestion that I um, switch to keyboard and mouse control um, he, on my last video he suggested a slow down in corners <laughs> but I uh, I'll try and do that but I don't have the I don't have a lot of patience, as you can probably tell about me. I'm so used to driving, race, playing racing games, and going hell for leather that I think I might struggle doing that. But I'll try and do it properly. I've always said I want to do is play the game properly, like as it as if it was real life. It's a simulator game after all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so he has a channel as well. I am. Um, I don't think he does video gaming on it, I think it's music and stuff. I did check it out but it was a while ago now. But he, I think, is the same guy who does, who does a, Reddit, a subreddit on Reddit for this game. It's Truxim. It's a great little uh, subreddit. Reddit. Uh, I've posted a few times on there. Not a, it's not a dead busy one either, so your, your posts stay, stay visible quite a long time, so that's good. So yeah, go check him out. Uh, I didn't write the name of his channel down, um, but whoa, playing on the trackpad, as you can tell. I 
didn't write the name of his channel down, but um, I'm subscribed to it. And Sudin, if you're watching this, um, no, actually, I'll put his channel name down in the description. And another shout out for you, a guy called um, the Woody Wooders, I think it was. And let me just oop, I'm trying to switch programs on my tablet <laughs> to the left of me here, uh, so I can see it. The Wooders World, the Wooders World. All right, focus on driving, Phil. Focus on driving. The Wooders World. Uh, he's a new subscriber to my channel. Um, I've given him a shout out because he has one, and it's good to give back. He's got. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You see, that's why you should focus. Don't want a jackknife in the middle of the street. I'm not gonna scrape my truck there yet. Okay. So go check out his channel. He's not uploaded a video for quite some time, but I think he's um, starting again. more money coming then from one of my drivers not Steve because he was on that job already yeah it must be must have been Reese yeah car parts 900 quid thanks Reese doing a good job for me there I'll buy you a drink at Christmas Okay, so today I want to talk about some bugbears of mine. <laughs> I've been to see, at work today, I've been to see one of the other programmers. And we were just, he, he watches all my videos, thanks mate, you know who you are. Um, he, we were talking about bugbears and he said that would be a good topic for your for a Euro truck video. So uh, as you probably know I'm a computer programmer in real life so this might get a bit geeky for you the next bit if you're if you're too cool for school then you might want to fast forward this bit but two massive bugbears of mine in the computing world are mispronunciation of technical terms. So, when you're programming, if you've got a function in your code that is good, say in version 1, but in version 2 you're removing it, then that function is said to be deprecated. Okay? D E P R E C A T E D deprecated. Not depreciated. Depreciated means reduction in value. Not uh, obsolete, like deprecated means. Deprecated actually means that it's going to be removed. You can still use it right now, but it's going to be removed in the future. In a future version. Oh, seriously. What are you doing to me? Why have you driven right? See, if I hit that car there, I'll get fined, probably. Don't 
don't want to focus. So yeah, so deprecated means it's going to be removed in a future version, so don't use it. Depreciated means reduction in value over time. Not the same word, not the same meaning, not the same pronunciation. Get it right. Another one is object orientated. So object orient object oriented programming, which is the correct term. Um, I think that's the correct term anyway, I hope it is after me ranting about it in the next few minutes. I'm pretty sure that's what they taught us at university. Object oriented programming is a particular paradigm or architecture. Why am I getting flashed? Can you see that in the video or is it my monitor is flashing? It stopped now. Like a car. Oh, I bet it's lightning. I bet it was lightning. Yeah, so object oriented programming is a particular development paradigm. There are others like functional programming or procedural programming. Object oriented is just one, it's a very common one. C is it. Um, but the point being, it's object oriented programming, not object orientated. And pretty much everybody I know calls it object orientated, not object oriented. That's, that's one more bugbear of mine. And there are other mis. or oh, not mispronounced. Um, strangely pronounced acronyms or whatever. So, <coughs> in database terminology, there's SQL, which stands for Structured Query Language, which is the language used for querying databases in a structured way. And almost everybody in the world uh, pronounces it as SQL. So, the SQL Server. I, SQL programming language, <coughs> excuse me, T SQL or Microsoft SQL servers. And I once met someone who <laughs> pronounced it as Squell. It took me a little while to figure out what he was talking about when he kept talking about this program called Diff Squell or Squell Diff or something where it basically analyzed two databases and different and created a script of the differences between the two, it's not important. Point being that he pronounced it squall, which I thought was really strange. I heard that before or since. Um, there are lots of terms. I suppose really I should just get over myself. And it's not that big a deal. I just find it irritating. I suppose uh, if you take the matrix view of words and language then it's really irrelevant so long as the understanding is uh, as long as both parties understand what you're saying so there's that big long monologue in uh, the matrix reloaded I think where Neo is in the train station oh no, it must be the matrix of revolutions which I think is the last one where Neo is in the train station and he's talking to the Asian dude about love and karma and he says love it love is just a word. What matters is the understanding that the word conveys. I guess the the point being that so long as we agree the word means that, then any word will do. There's nothing significant about the word except that everybody understands that that means something. So, after ranting about object oriented dated programming and uh, deprecated and squirrel and others that I've heard like cached instead of cached and so on, so long as you understand what we mean and the people that I'm talking to understand what I mean 
and the people they're talking to understand what they mean, then does it really matter? Probably the answer is no. Why is this guy, these guys going so slow? Is this a 30 zone? 30 zone? I guess so. Come on, come on. See, this is exactly the kind of thing that I don't have the patience for. I just want to speed through, taking all of my self-control, not to just bomb over there and overtake them all. When I, when I was in Nottingham today, there was... Uh, so my staff told me to go sort of across through Derbyshire, past Buxton and Chesterfield. If you know your English geography or your northern English geography, then you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, then humour me. But it was really foggy today and we got, I got stuck behind this truck. So my, when I set off from home, the sat nav said it would take an hour and 45 minutes. It ended up taking two and a half hours nearly because I got stuck behind this truck and he was going so slow and actually since playing this game I have noticed trucks a lot more on the road and I do take note of what manufacturer they are, what model they are because what is that guy doing? What on earth was that? <laughs> uh, that was when he moved out miles behind him and then didn't even speed up. Let's go for an overtake. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so I stuck behind this, this truck and I have been noticing trucks on the road, making note of, well, not making note of, but. Looking at them thinking, oh, I've drove, I've driven one of them on your truck simulator too. Well, this wasn't even a cool one. It was, uh, in fact, it wasn't a truck with a trailer at all on it. It was uh, one of these seven and a half ton ones. They kind of integrated. So it's not a truck and a trailer. It's just a truck. If that makes sense. So that was a bit lame, and I was getting really frustrated. But because it was so foggy. Visibility was really low, which I guess was one of the reasons why he was going so slow. But it also meant that I wasn't brave enough to overtake because you couldn't really see oncoming traffic or you couldn't see the road ahead very far, which was irritating. That maneuver I've just pulled on that truck back there reminded me of a time when I was in India on a bus. Income, seven hundred pounds. Thanks, Kyle. Ooh, Kyle has leveled up. Good job. Good job. Yeah, so I was in India one time on a it was a missionary trip to help some orphans. And and we were on this truck uh, on this bus, sorry going down a mountain and it was kind of all hairpin bends and stuff like that. It, was, it was literally the most terrifying bus journey I've ever had because uh, they, they just pelt it everywhere and we came down this mountain it was a two hours trip to get down this mountain during which time uh, several oncoming buses had clipped Ours. One time the mirror, one of the guys took his mirror off right underneath my window, which is pretty scary. I made to come down this mountain and this, on this long straight flat road, like kind of the kind of road you'd expect to see in like the Nevada desert or something. Oh, oh. Focus on the turns, Phil. And anyway, he was. This bus driver was 
overtaken a truck uh, because it was going slower than the bus driver was but the problem was that it, it was going like half a mile an hour slower than the bus so it took the bus literally five or six minutes to actually get past the truck uh, thankfully it was a really quiet road um, but then <laughs> because it was a bus and he had to pick up passengers we got past we overtook the other the truck and then Rostock discovered welcome to Rostock I was going to make a joke about Chinese Rostock then but decided against it yeah, so as soon as he got past this truck, he had to stop. It was as we approached the village, he had to stop to pick up passengers. So he slammed the brakes on. So he'd literally just overtaken the truck and then slammed the brakes on. And the truck sped past. Thankfully, he avoided a collision. But he braked so hard that the seat uh, in front of us just broke off. Literally, just sheared off the uh, bus near the floor, disconnected itself from the floor sort of thing um, so yeah, scary trip what was really funny as well was that the people who were sat on the seat just sort of got up and moved over Mo you know, moved on the next one like it was a regular occurrence in the parking up here. Let's see. Let's get that one more shot. Turn the lights off now because we're in the middle of the day, you don't need any more. And as soon as I drop this off, I think I'm going to have to go and get my truck fixed. Damages what was that eighteen percent I believe. Okay, properly botched this up. Might let us off though. You going to? No. No. Okay, you skip that. Okay, so let's see five percent damage point, four thousand, that's rubbish. Rubbish. And let's see how I did Reese do. Is it Reese that leveled up? Yep. Yeah. Another one in eco driving. Let's change that a bit to high value cargo. He's on duty again. Excellent. Actually, let me keep that on eco driving. The levels up again. Let's do better than me. Can my rate compared to this? Okay, and then let's see how much damage. Seven thousand pounds. Oh, that gives me a headache. For a four thousand pounds, you have seven thousand pounds damage. That's not the way to do business, is it? Well, thanks for watching guys anyway, uh, it's really late here, I'm going to bed. Check out my Tomb Raider series, uh, Tomb Raider's a great game, I've been really enjoying playing it, check it out. Feel free to subscribe and comment on the video, let me know if you've got any feedback or whatever, positive or negative, it's all welcome. Cheers guys, Good night. bye.